Hey guys, Luna here, and welcome back to Hive Swap Friendsim. Now, last we last left off, we met an interesting purple blood clown who has associations with a certain jade of blood. Now we are on to volume 15 of cre uh, Creatives, Conventional, and Otherwise. Looks like an olive blood and a jade blood this time around. You walk with a purpose. You don't, you don't really have a purpose, aside from friendship, of course, which is always a good thing to have. <laughs> As, but you, you know these streets pretty well by this point, so you can at least strut like you've got one. So, let's see, we got Charon Cabel. Some of the weirdest names. Seed Charon um, Lub. Charon Karajib. Jib. And Olive Blood. And then I want she had yet uh, jade blood, jade blood. Okay, definitely it's going to be interesting to see the shenanigans that come out of this because who knows? Oh, that's an adorable little face. Aww. And then, so, but today we're going to do Charwind Kajab's route. Actually, you know what? You think you've had it up to here with friendship. You sure you'll be back on your regular uh, friend-making bullshit later? But today is just one of those days, a curl up under the blanket with your favorite show sort of day. A leave your, uh, leave your phone on silent and say nothing to no one sort of day. I've had that kind of day before. Which, it honestly feels great just not to, like, do anything. I'd, I don't know if that's just me, but it, it feels lovely. <laughs> and honestly, he watched a friend almost die of poisoning and gazed up upon the jungle afterlife. You think you, you've you more than earned a day, or night rather, of respite like this. So just for today, you can turn back on this new swath of a Terran city you were just considering walking through, and you head back to your old uh, goatee hideout. No explorations today, only beds. Which is probably for the best, because sometimes you just gotta relax. You drag yourself up the scaffolding to your hidey hole. More than anything, more than binging on media or relaxing amidst peace and quiet, you want to take a nice long nap. Pull yourself into a little pile of bedding, pillows, and various pieces of clothing you've managed to throw together and settle in. As soon as your body touches it, you're out like a light. But it isn't very long until you're awake again, and not because your body is rehousing itself after sufficient slumber, aww, so I guess someone's... but because of a persistent scrabbling sound. A persistent scrabbling sound that's followed by a loud thunk. That does not sound very good at all. <laughs> Typically, that wouldn't be enough to get you up. You're a pretty heavy sleeper, but the noise is accompanied by the nagging sensation that whatever is making that noise is up in the room with you, and that has you bolting upright. That's, that, yep, like I said, that's definitely not the most welcoming feeling. <laughs> you must have woken up in the middle of your REM cycle because you feel like a mummy rising out of the crypt. Is this real life, or is this just a fantasy? Your brain struggles to make sense of your surroundings, the rare fog of residual sleepiness that is still settled over you as you stumble over your feet. Eventually, you are able to discern that the noise is coming from behind and above you, around where the ceiling is. That does not make much sense whatsoever. What the hell? Is there a raccoon crawling in the vents? Does Atira even have raccoons? If it does, you're pretty sure you wouldn't want to meet one, but you can't exactly leave it a, in, in your living space either. You get up to investigate. 
The noise isn't coming from the ceiling like you thought, but uh, from a platform that's been shoved and unceremoniously to the very back of the watchtower. <laughs> so it looks like someone's just trying to climb up. There's a large object in front of that in front of it that wasn't there before. A giant curved lens that could only have come from the hole that is now in the side of the platform structure. Maybe this was an old telescope or camera that the condescents once used for surveillance? The scrabbling continues. It's coming from within the structure. You're not eager for whatever it is in there to come jumping out at you as soon as you stick your head inside, but you seal your nerves and hoist yourself up. Sometimes that might just be the best thing to do, even though it's probably not the smartest. You find yourself face to face with not some weird animal or bug, but a troll. This is a bona fide friend of opportunity. It's practically fallen in your lap, but you find yourself unexpectedly ornate about it. You would think that you would expect some privacy in your own home, or, well, the place you've adopted as home in Ontario, anyway, but apparently not. <laughs> Even when you decide that you aren't in a friendship mood, there's, there, there the universe goes, yeeting new friends into your, your path anyways. Can't you just go a day on this planet without dancing this whole friendship gig? Unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately not, my friend, because there's life to be had and this is a video game, so we kind of have to go continue on with meeting new friends and meeting new people, so... If there's something to be had, we kind of just have to go with the flow. <laughs> Quickly becomes obvious that this mysterious stranger isn't going to offer you anything more than a enigmatic gazing into the middle uh, middle distance. You, uh, what exactly are they doing in your hideout, you ask? If they were thinking about moving in, they could have at least asked you first. You're the current occupant, after all. <laughs> I want to move in. I already have a hive. Came up here for that. Uh, what? Well, they clearly are interested in something, so they point past you. You can only assume that they're referring to the giant lens you'd seen on the floor. Well, if they got what they came for, why are they still hanging out in this platform in it's like this? I'm stuck. What? And they didn't try calling for help? <laughs> of course they didn't notice me. Wherever you came from. Didn't think anyone else was here. Kind of imagining sort of like a Sans from Undertale kind of voice, which sort of like a deep but kind of like jokey tone. Would they perhaps like some help? Maybe. <laughs> of course, of course, I understand. As you hop down from the platform, you find your ire draining from your much like flesh juice from a pimple. It's difficult to say angry upon a witnessing what possibly the most pathetic burglary attempt ever, and that's counting your little fiasco with your ship. <laughs> um, after walking around to the other side of the platform, you can see the troll's booted legs sticking out from a gap in the structure. It looks too narrow for anyone to call through, and yet that's exactly what they must have done in the order to push the lens out from behind. You yell that you're going to try and pull them out. You hear a faint muttered, okay, and reach up to grab them from around the waist, pulling hard. Which, I don't think this is gonna work out well. It takes a couple tries, but with one last particularly hard tug, for you finally able to pull them free. They tumble down on top of you. Or getting me unstuck, begging my fall. <sighs> it's fine, it's fine. You didn't really do that part on purpose, but they're glad they appreciated it, you guess. They seem pretty content to continue laying on top of you. Actually, they're but but they're pretty heavy, so you wiggle out from underneath them like an ear wig under a rock and clamber to your feet. Yep, that's just you're not at the lens. That's what they want, huh? The troll sits up, crossing their legs. You can see them more clearly now that they aren't sequestered inside the platform, although their faces are skewed a little by their shaggy hair and floppy white burbot hats. I like their hairstyle, it's stylish. <laughs> they look up about as sleepy as you felt earlier, as sleepy as you're in danger of feeling again, in fact. 
The voice is slow and regular, like a metronome dumped in my glasses. That's exactly what I was thinking! <laughs> and it almost threatens to send you right back to bed. Yeah. So? Can I have it? You swear you can feel your friend making juices start circulating through your body again with a vengeance after a little their little sabbatical. You just said you didn't want to make friends, but here you are going about making more friends. What are you? You're not really sure what came over you before. Turned down the chance to make a new friend? You? Aha! Wow. Who kidnapped you and replaced you with a total stranger for a few hours there? You, you tell the troll, of course they can have the lens. It's not like you're doing anything with it, or like it's even yours to begin with. It's just abandoned here along with the rest of the broken down tech. Curiously, you ask what they want it for. <sighs> Are they building something? Perhaps they're an engineer of some sort. No? Climbing all, all the way up here? Just for some building material? It'd be pretty dumb. Want to use it for... Huh. You look at the lens again skeptically. It's a cool lens, you suppose, but it looks mostly looks like exactly what it is. Hunk of junk. They want to make art out of this? The work must be pretty uh and see before every choice. Must be pretty interesting. I'm waiting about somebody say do. At you like they've taken some sort of issue with your comment. Have you managed to offend them? You thought you were being polite enough given the circumstance. Interesting is what you people you people say when they have nothing better to say. Do you have a problem with making art of trash? Oh, I I don't have. I just have, don't don't know what your art looks like, so I can't make a good comment out of it, buddy. I'm sure it looks great. Probably. I just, honestly, I don't know what it looks like, so I can't say for sure. Shake your head rapidly, but the troll is already crossing their arms and shooting you a disapproving look. I don't think I want to talk to you anymore. Oh no, does that mean they're going to leave and... <sighs> I'm all cuddled up in one of my blankets, I guess that's why I'm yawning so much. <laughs> does that mean they're going to leave and after you've just up and decided to try and add the them to your ever-growing friend harem too. <laughs> no? Tired. Oh, okay then. They're just gonna kind of lower at you at the, from the floor for a while until they get their strength back enough to leave. You assume? This definitely isn't awkward at all. Friendship fuck- Oh, that's, that's unfortunate, but I'm sure everything's gonna be fine. After all, we have... More paths to see. So it must be weird. <laughs> yeah. The two of you alternate between looking at the lens and looking at each other for a little while. Why am I not surprised? Uh, usually over the course of making a new friend, they usually would ask you to do something by now. Or presented you with some sort of... Choice. Between two potential course of action. Um, is there anything they like to do now that they've retrieved their art materials? Lose. Guess it's all on you then. They probably want to take the lens back to their hive, right? Well, and but I'm tired and hungry. Forging for garbage takes a lot of energy. I used the last. That used the last of it climbing up here. This reminds me so much of Sands. <laughs> I don't think I'll be able to carry it by myself. But, uh, I suppose, uh, sure, okay, I suppose that makes sense, but still. They really didn't think this whole junk heist through very well, did they? But you would have looked at that. This is an excellent time to make a suggestion. Uh, why not look for more easily portable trash then? Sure, this giant sun is pretty neat, but there's probably plenty of other cool stuff they could have used that would be wouldn't be such a pain to me. What is that? Scratching their cheek. There is one place that I go to for a lot of material, so that's just a start, I suppose. <laughs> 
not? Maybe the two of you could go there then. You could help. You, you, you'll you, even graciously hold on to the lunch for them so that they can come get it some other time. Okay, I'd have to come back for it. Even if you hadn't sent anything though. They could take you to a garbage dump. However, to be completely accurate, which has plenty of garbage washed upon the shore. Which, this looks like a really cool design choice aesthetic. Something about the strength and direction of the river's current seems to pull the waste that's been dumped into it, concentrating debris on this muddy patch of land. It definitely sounds pretty interesting, to say the least. You're not sure what you've expected, really. You had fleeting thoughts of gleaming art supply store, but they did intimate they did intimidate that they work primarily with garbage. You hear? But I'll tell anyone about this place. It's a real treasure trove. <laughs> yes, I'm Beagle I love Beagle Cuddly while doing these, though. They nail you with another intense stare. No, you say. Of course not. The trash trove haven is safe with you. Satisfied, they pull up their bandana sitting around their neck to cover up their nose and mouth. Looks like they're ready to get to work. We're not sure what you should be looking for, though. More discarded computer equipment, or are you, or are they in more in the mood of toilet paper roll and yoga cup kind of mood? Whatever catches your eye. If you see anything, just shout. Now that you mention it, you never got their name. Sharon, if you have a chitter, you can follow me. They held out their arm. They held out their hand for your palm husks. You hand it to them, and they fiddle with it for a second before returning to you and are pacing it off. A little c clicking around reveals that they are now in your chitter, chitter following list, but they also that they have taken a liberty of downloading a new app, an app with a purple pink camera icon, and. Okay, you recognize this one as well, except on a terry ad, it's apparently. Oh, it's apparently called Pincer Snam. Uh, searching for their triple hand leads you to their account to, on here too. At least you think it's their account. It's hard to tell from their profile picture, which is a blurry shot of one of their horns and the brim of their hat. Most of what you can see is sky. Maybe skimming their account will give you a better idea of their aesthetic. You scroll through photographs that are similarly enigmatic. Enigmatic. Basically, similarly mysterious. An intense close up of a sewer drain lid, the curve of the piece of cermatic, Kirby sniffing the camera. That's. I, I suppose that can be pretty interesting to whoever finds that. Interesting, I suppose. They got quite a number of followers, despite the fact that nobody seems to know who they are, and that no one, and they never replied to the comments. That's a friend in common too. Uses Survivor streams for sweeps, has liked a slew of their most recent posts. Hmm. None of this is very helpful, but it's. it's you also realize that you're standing here stalking your new friend on your phone like a creep when you could just be, you could just, you know, go talk to them about some more, so you hurry up after them. By the time you catch up, they're squinting at something. What's that over there? You follow their gaze. It's a hideout of some kind. A small cave tucked in, into the rock. The two of you approach curi curiously. Charn st uh, stoops at to peer at something on the ground near its entrance, but you decide to venture further in. You become- uh, you think you might hear voices, and the sources become apparent once you've taken a few steps inside. Who goes there? Feel yourself. <gasps> hey! It's this dude! Okay. As... Uh, Jaja makes an appearance. Mm. Oops. And, uh, let's. See. I have to remember what's, what's, what's his name. I, I, I don't remember this dude's name. Give me a second. I have. Well, not, the, not this dude that's on screen, but the. 
do with that as we edit it. Going through the play going through my playlist to try and remember people's names. Uh yeah, sir it literally just serve uh serve uh Their their Twitter post. Posts. Okay. Got that. Anyways. Oh, it's just you. Back for round two. No, I do not want round two. The likelihood of this battle outcome being anything. Oh, no, it's it's both of their appearances. The likelihood of this battle outcome being anything other than me kicking your ass is exactly zero. Typical. Yeah, this would be a massive waste of my time. But luckily for you, I have nothing better to do. A jaw searches forward, presumably to attack you, but any air of intimidation his little speech might have had is quickly diffused by Konya grabbing him firmly by the back of his coat and yanking him back. Which I also want to make my pencil. Oh, there's my pencil. Okay, it's too wise. Konya and Zhao. Okay. Baj, don't be rude. Zhao shrugs Konya's hand away. The quiet sizzle of his psionics is like the hiss of, <laughs> of a pissed off cat. This, my dear Kanya, is merely smack talk. A print as a prince among my cast. Runus is simply not part of my repertoire. Kanya just snorts. Well then stop being a strife hungry dick. My friend is delicate, okay? You protest that you aren't at all as delicate as the last time you run into each other. You've seen some shit. Isaac's sparkly side nonsense doesn't scare you now, which might be for the best, but still, it can still scare us a little. The two of you are too focused on each other to pay attention to you. You telling me not to fight for once is pretty rich. Don't you think I feel the same as you? It's been too long since I have some someone to punch. Whose bright idea was it in the first place to hole up here in a trash dump for days? I told you over and over again that we are here because our quarry is somewhere close. Uh, of course they're looking for <laughs> looking for someone. We just have to figure out exactly where. It's a perfectly rational plan. You would see that if you just think for a second. Yikes. We thought that maybe you could have a nice three-way friend reunion, but they're too busy squabbling. Meanwhile, where Charon had gone off to, you slink away from the escalating sniping, looking around for them. Gansh, not entirely surprised when you find them hunched over some object on the ground, poking at it. You know these two. You say, you say in a st stage whisper, pointing to Konya and Azia in this direction. You could introduce them once you're not quite so much yelling going on. Charon pulls down their bandana to answer. No oh, thanks. Found something more interesting over here. They gesture at the at the at the object. This is a great find. Never seen anything like it. I can make something amazing out of this. You take a uh, take a proper look at the object. It appears to be a miniature satellite dish with a few pipe cleaners sticking out of it. Unlike all this other stuff out here, though, this object is moving. This, di this dish is rotating while a few lights glimmer softly at its base. You're pretty sure this isn't trash, and weren't Connie and Asia just discussing tracking someone? Whatever this is, probably belongs to them. Hopefully not too serious, though? That's why I gotta shock them, so I can nab it. Okay, this is no longer scavenging, this is straight up thievery. We glance at Konya and Nazia again. They are, they're so preoccupied with arguing with each other that they haven't even looked your way, but once they realize the tracker is missing, they've probably decided to go after Charm to get it back. That happens, solve them, so I can get away in time. 
Uh, this is not a good plan. This doesn't sit right with you. You don't want to screw your two friends over, over. And the energy between them is so weird right now. The verbal sparring looks like... It looks about a hair's breadth away from turning to a physical sparring. But they also kind of look like they want to make out. Oh, so their speeds, I think. Their speeds are hearts, or maybe they flop between the two. Whatever's going on, you don't want to be caught in the middle of it. That, however, sounds exactly like Chan wants you to do. <sighs> I'll make it up to you someday. Does does not sound like you'll make it up to me at all. <sighs> Before he could make a decision, Tron tucks the piece of tech under their arm. They're running it. They take a running leap toward a fence that seconds off this gross trash shore from the woods, vaunting over it in an impressive display of athletic prowess. You cringe. Tron is really leaving you in the lurch here. This is so not the kind of thing good thing a good friend would do, but then maybe you were never really friends in the first place. Yeah, oh, so... Are they... Yeah, so there's speeds, but with us there, it could become a clubs. Um, so let's go to this one. What happens if... So, just the same thing dialogue-wise, so you can help carry it then. Four arms are better than two. That? Make sure you're careful with it. Of course, of course, you're treated with all the delicacy of an egg in an egg and spoon race. I don't know what that is. Which might be for the best that you don't get our references. Carrying it to the watchtower entrance is easy enough. Maneuvering it down the cliff fence is more complicated. Manage by holding it between you as you navigate from foothold to foothold. When you reach the bottom, the troll looks like they're ready to sit down again right there right there in the bush. But you urge them on. Resting in, in their hive would probably be much more comfortable. That's the wrong way. Sheepishly, you roll back around from the random direction you are about to strive toward and follow them instead. With them leading the way and you bringing up with rear, the two of you shamble along the path with all the easy grace of two people in a horse costume. <laughs> that sounds pretty fun. Uh, but you make it to your new companion's hive much quicker than you would have expected. They come to a stop in front of the entrance to a cave in another cliffside. If this is their place, it isn't very far from your stall. You're surprised that you haven't run into them until now. They're practically a neighbor. I've seen around before. Pretty hard to miss. Really? Then they should have said hi and introduced themselves. The two of you could have been hanging out all this time. Exactly. Didn't feel like it. Besides, was busy. With more of the scavenging of art business, you guess? Oh, well, you're getting to know each other now, which is important. Yes, yes it is. Because there's nothing like meeting new friends. Speaking of, you've been talking and walking along and you haven't exchanged names yet. Or I miss of you. Usually you would have gotten introductions out of the way from the moment they broke into your hideout, but it's been an odd sort of night. Which, yeah, it's been one of those days. That's okay, Charon. Now come on, let's go inside. They pull you and lens forward. They, uh, didn't ask you your name in return, but you managed to bumblingly introduce yourself as you lurch, lurch along into the hive. This is definitely one of those interesting places. And who is that under some trash? At home on Earth, you had a thing about gar garages. You thought it was interesting to scope the sort of stuff people ended up accumulating. You've seen some real gems in your day. A collection of singing and dancing novelty plant figurines, a small army of Furbies without any fur, the beat up remains of some sort of cat, cat uh, mascot costume. That I am curious where the writers of this game draw inspiration for these comments because I would never have thought about those sorts of things at all. 
the inside of Karen, like, Charon's hive is, is every single weird gar garage you've ever seen converge to exist simultaneously in the same cave. The platonic ideal of garages. Garages? Gar gar blah, blah, blah. It's hard to believe that someone lives here. If you look close, though, you begin to notice homely comforts tucked away in the metal junkyard scraps and broken furniture piled all over the floors and all the way up in the craggly key walls. Reparer Cone sits on the ledge of one wall, and you think that the kitchen cabinet's wedged into another? So, what do you think? Be cozy, you say, giving them a double thumbs up. The slag tights are a nice touch. I meant all about all my art. Oh, the art, of course. Uh, <laughs> of course, of course. Why am I not surprised? You cast around desperately. Sharon. Sharon's hive is a jumble of miscellany that is impossible for you to figure out which is the art materials and which are finished art works and which are Sharon's actual belongings. There's a pretty nasty skull over there with leaves in its eye sockets, the angle of which the umbrella sticks out of the lawn chair is really uh, compelling. You settle on a purple object in one corner that looks like a more traditional sculpture than a bunch of household objects stuck together. Those curves, the uh, uh, arm of the you, truly an inspiring piece. Charon looks at you strangely. That's just the load gaper. You don't know much about art, do you? Busted. Uh, well, I know about art, I just don't know much about his art style. If you could tell me what your style was, like, like, if you pointed out which pieces were yours, I could better comment on it. <laughs> no, no, you really don't. Ramil had taught you the importance of giving the people what they want, and Amnesia had taught you the importance of putting a tarp down before lobbing off a head so blood or paint doesn't get all over the floor. But you haven't learned very much about actually creating art from them. As you gaze around the cave again, you find that you really want to understand. Clearly, this is something that's important to Charon, otherwise, why would they have spent the majority of the time on it? The problem is, you didn't point out which is your art and which is not, so I can't really comment on it, buddy. You too wish to experience the marvels of, your creative, of the creative process. If only there was a way for you to learn. Charon, if you want to that badly, you could make something. Out of what I collected. That's 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 actually quite nice. I'm glad you understand that I would like to learn something. Really? But they must have worked so hard to find all of this. Is it really fine for you just to go around with it? You're surprised to see that Karan looks pleased at what you're saying. It's maybe the most expressive you've seen him since he met. All art is dicking around. Looks like you've already starting to get it. He smiled proudly. Anyway. If you're making something sucky, they shrug their shoulders, they can just take it apart again and reuse its its separate components to make something else. You smile, your smile flags a little. Where do you want to start? You rub your chin thoughtfully. You wander over to the lawn chair with the umbrella in it. The pile of fabric is stacked on top. Uh, stacked on top. You rifle through it until you find some colors you like. Then you walk around to the other side of Charon's hive, searching for other items you might be able to use. Char Charon doesn't offer much in terms of guidance, aside from cautioning you away from a couple objects that are actually finished artworks. Oops. You end up with an armful of knickknacks that you put down in front of what now is a lamp post, but soon you'll be your canvas of choice, and you get to work. The fabric you twirl around all around the post. You tie the smaller objects, a snow globe, an old boot, a fantasy Santa, onto with it with a string. On top, you, per you perch a rubber wall mount goose that makes a majestically horrible noise when pressed. As your art piece comes together under your hands, you take a few steps back every now and again to uh, praise it from a further away, making adjustments with whatever you find something you're not happy with, which might be for the best. Finally, it is complete. You turn to ask Charon's opinion, newly flushed with pride and adrenaline from having successfully made a thing. 
They don't look very impressed. Your face falls. What's wrong? Did you use too much orange? Were the, the scattered luscus seed a little too out there? Listen, you're overthinking this. Just do what feels right. You frown. Don't think at all then, just that your instincts drive you. Might be the <laughs> little is probably good too. Okay, don't overthink it, but don't abandon a rational thought altogether. That your feelings guide you, but not completely. Um, pretty vague, but sure, you'll give another shot. You ship the lamp post back down. This this time you don't spend too long guarding it in all its new middle glory. You begin working immediately, whipping around trying to have a flurry of cave dust and determination, grabbing things as soon as you lay eyes on them. Charon looks at it more and more fascinated the longer you're at it. It's not long till their eyes are positively gleaming. Soon they're just taking step after tentative step towards you, as if drawn to you by the sheer force of your artistic energies. Which definitely sounds interesting. But soon, soon they're taking a... Uh, they look like they might want to join in, actually. Is that okay? I see what you're going for, I think. Uh, your vibe has got me all inspired. Of course, the more the merrier. We'd love to see what the two of you could create together. With a Bailey there smile, Charm plants a traffic cone at the base of the lamppost with great palm, and you're off. Uh, oh, sh sure, okay. Let's go with that. It's a blur after that. The two of you move in unison like you're co-piling a jaguar, except instead of a giant robot, you're steering a feverish week rate of propeller fugasteed. Wow, I think we're almost done. Stand back from your newly forged pile of brick and brick e brack mopping the sweat from your brow. They're right. You're almost finished. Almost. You need to have a finishing touch. The piece, the pistol resistance, and you know just the thing. With a great conviction, you pick up a box from the floor, tearing it open so the contents fall all over your sculpture. Oh no, my polystyrofish slats. You freeze. Are those cooking ingredients? You seem to have gotten carried away. You start apologizing, but Charn is already raving your words away. It's fine. It looks better like this. Too good to waste as food. Anyways, I can find other things to eat. I feel ill now, because I don't know what food is. You both regard your creation. Having, leaving a breath, you're done. As you exhausted as you are, a wonderful calm settles over you as you admire the results of your hard work. It's beautiful. It really, really is. You don't know how because you don't think you've actually done anything different compared to your first try. Maybe you just got lucky. Sometimes that can happen. But regardless of exactly how it came about, this is one of your most bizarre, sublime things you think you've ever laid eyes on in your life. The longer you stare at it, the more layers and death are real themselves to you, like the petals of a newly bloomed flower opening to the sunlight of spring. Abruptly, irresistibly, you feel yourself gripped in the throes of profound new knowledge. Sure, okay, just that sure. Charms are works are pointless and weird, but perhaps that what gives them their charm. In such an uncertain, violent world where a tro troll calls troll and where you might be trapped in an endless Sifrenian journey across the planet in search of new friends. A for a brief moment, you can have this. You can stand here, awash and appreciative of what the fuck at this masterpiece you've crafted out of a bunch of other people's trash, marveling at how you birthed something greater than yourself. Sometimes trash can be beautiful. You think you understand now? This is what Charon must have been enduring to teach you. You beam at them, glowing with the joy of, d of your discovery. Uh, sure, okay, I'll just go with it. Um, yeah, sure, if you say so. Joyride! Huzzah! We made a new friend. With that, I'm going to leave this episode here. I hope you guys have a good day, night, week, month of your life. And may the stars forever guide your path, forever it might lead you into the future. Bye-bye.